Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Professor Eben Moglen, who is very well known in the area of free software, open source, general public license, or what's known as GPL, protecting various people from various laws of the United States and elsewhere. <laughs> Evan, good to have you with us. It's a great pleasure to be with you. The current issues, of course, in software, on free software issues particularly, pertains to the Oracle versus Google patent suit which has been filed. Do you think that this kind of quote-unquote patent claims on source which was originally free and open source would represent a big threat? Well, what's happening here is an example of the way in which, in a more general sense, patenting of software and, and information technology causes extraordinary harm to both communities and capital-funded organizations that work in the area. What we have here is an interesting historic development. It's a demonstration of the way in which firms which have been suing one another about patent claims over proprietary software for years now begin to move into suing one another over patent claims that read on free software. It's a demonstration of how important, commercially speaking, free software, anarchistically produced software, software produced without ownership relations, has become to global IT. Now that they are in this extraordinary and ironic position in which things made without property relations have become essential to the success of their businesses, they find themselves killing the goose that lays the golden egg even though they know they don't want to because of the intrinsic conflict between the way things are really produced in the 21st century and the way this 19th century patent system that we have thinks that things are produced. In the 21st century, it is neither firms nor individuals which are the primary foci of production. The production occurs in the 21st century in digital goods in communities. It's true with respect to distribution. Advertising is social media based, network based, tell your friends on your Facebook page based. In the United States, where young people are extensively in social networks and their spending is in those social networks, if you order a meal online for delivery to your apartment or your workplace, you're going to be automatically asked if you want to put that on your Facebook page so that people will know what takeout food you've just ordered just as people are using Last FM or other such things to tell one another what music they're listening to right this minute. Everybody's business has come to be instrumenting the lives of people. So when Oracle and Google fall out about the Java version in the Android phone, it may seem to be a very technical question. Is there a valid patent on just-in-time address resolution in Java-like languages? But that tiny little technical issue, which also turns out to be hundreds of millions of dollars of claims wide because the patent system does such weird things with it, it's really a part of a deeper phenomenon, which is the, the, the way in which the free world's production and all that user-provided content, which is really just people en masse communicating with one another, is becoming the underlying stratum on which the cash nexus and the distribution of goods for profit is now based. Evan, there is one possibility in this, that either the community-based production system overtakes the firms, there is a general, in that sense, larger communitarian products that are built and you have a society which is a society which is quite different from what we see it to, it to be or we get the situation where this community based production system is actually subverted by the power of the firms what would you think is likely to happen well the the the, the near term by which we mean our lifetimes near term is that interesting period in which either could precipitate out and conflict begins to develop in unexpected ways we see now a situation in which the 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 nature of that conflict is explored generationally most of the people above the age of 35 or 40 in the world, even if they work in digital industries, still bring to those industries the mindset of the production system which the late 20th century took for granted.
Moreover, all the digital workers in the world put together are still a tiny fraction of all the people in the world engaged in commercial relationships, most of which are surrounded by rules of property. So in the near term, the question poses itself more as, can we keep the balloon of community-based production and distribution inflated? Or is it going to be flattened by the overarching weight of the ubiquity of cash-based distri distribution of property turned into money, turned back into property? What happened to commons resources at the end of the 19th century? What happened to them in some parts of the world at the end of the 18th century or even earlier? is that they were overset by the immense expanding volume of the capital-driven economy. What we're doing at the beginning of the 21st is watching as the capital-driven economy comes to have a need to keep the balloon inflated. And the most important part of the strategy for any long-term victory in this stage means keeping them keeping the balloon inflated by minimizing the degree to which the contradictions implicit in what's going on are harmful to ownership in the near term, however much they may be bad for the idea of ownership in the long term. The most interesting thing, I think, about that place where production by ownership and production by community meets in the digital world is that it is production by ownership that has the short time span of planning. Production by ownership thinks one quarter, two quarters, three quarters ahead. Its long-term plans are five years long. Over that span of time, our interests can be very closely correlated, even if over a larger span of time the correlation among our interests is very small. Therefore, to answer your question, I hope that in the short term, no contradiction arises either way. We neither beat them nor do they beat us. Instead, we become ever more necessary to them, and they become ever more adapted to living with us and ever less adapted to living without us. Later, down the road, something else will happen. Well, this is the argument, essentially, that if the community-based production system can keep on expanding, and if capital, large corporations really need it for their survival, over a period of time, it will have expanded to an extent that it could conceivably become a threat to the basic production system that exists today. It becomes a supplement to the basic production system, which at a minimum ameliorates some of the difficulties that the basic production system imposes upon those who aren't its beneficiaries. The ecological cost of the transition to capital-intensive production around the world has been vast for the vast number of human beings whose subsistence was made possible by it. This is the immense irony of the 20th century revolution, that it allowed so many human beings to exist, and yet, in an inevitable way, that ownership will drove them to the wall. The destruction of the commons was in fact one of the major elements to this because it assumed that forest, rivers, air, everything was commons which could be appropriate. And that appropriation was, in the view of the appropriators, increase in efficiency, increase in production, increase in the carrying capacity of the human race. It was right. so right. It was exactly in that sense a, a Malthusian process that the analysis of the revolution in output brought us to. We could see that by increasing the ownership in the commons, some resources could be managed with greater greater long-term efficiency, and the consequence would be to drive the volume of available material for sustaining human life to higher levels. Of course, if it's not a sustainable process, then you wind up creating the possibility of a lot of miserable human life. And what we are now doing at the beginning of the 20th century is coping with the intentional, out-of-control Malthusianism of the way that ownership-based production worked. We can't resolve all problems in the community-based production system of the digital economy. Food exists in a world of non-zero marginal cost, and the economics remain dismal. 
It's education which exists in the world of non-zero marginal cost. The reproduction of knowledge exists in the world of zero marginal cost. And there we can produce the equivalent of the unlocking of resources that the ownership economy experienced 200 years ago, but we experience it the other way, by reducing ownership and eliminating barriers to reproduction. When we do that, we compete, in effect, that Malthusian economy of physical objects against the ingenuity that we raise by educating every brain and creating new ideas and new approaches to the benefiting of human life. The question that seems to me to be agitated by all of that, and which I tried to address at the beginning of this decade, is how close that carries us to the idea of from each according to his ability and to each according to his need brings me to the last point, and I think you've already covered a part of it, that this community-based production is obviously superior to ownership-based production when it comes to knowledge, when it comes to the digital economy, when it comes to education. Do you think it also has possibilities in terms of the actual physical goods economy, because a large part of it is going to be knowledge-based. It's going to be knowledge-based, and at some point in the future, we begin to be able to depend upon the self-assembly of matter and living things. The fundamental difficulty which underlies the real goods economy, the tragedy that comes out of the non-commons, of the ownership of the material of production by the few and the necessity of gaining either the consent or the submission of the many, is that in the end the labor of assembling is a labor which only human beings can apply. The initial step in the alteration of that structure out of feudalism and into industrialism or whatever you want to call that step is capital intensive and, in, and makes ownership increase in power. But as we come to the latter part of the 21st century where nanotechnology means that things assemble themselves and a working actual intellectual understanding of the genetic material of life means that the engineering of self-reproduction by living material is possible, we reach a new stage in the technological evolution of the question about what happens where non-zero marginal cost goods are. By the end of the 21st century, both living things and non-living things will be capable of assembling themselves. And the nature of what labor is required to do will be far more dependent upon that question of how brains got educated. The structure we are dealing with in the world of free software is half of that overall structure only. The concern about the patent system is that it addresses both halves because it addresses so fundamentally issues of software, but as soon as we get away from issues of software, it addresses also the question of the molecules of life and the self-assembly of materials. If the patent system imposes ownership on invention in that area, if it denies the opportunity to allow the commons of ideas to invent freely in relation to those technologies, then we get the pessimal result at the end of the 21st century. If the commons is allowed to develop so that life is engineered in a free way, as software is currently engineered, if the objects of self-assembling matter, whether you think of that as life or non-life, can be assembled freely by anybody who has the idea of how it's meant to work, which will happen sooner or later unless ownership intervenes, then we have the optimal result in which even in the world of physical goods we move closer to from each according to his ability and to each according to his need. Thanks, Evan. This has been a really interesting discussion. Thank you I'm so sure much. our viewers would also find it to be so. Thanks.